All right, all right, all right. Welcome, everyone, to Tabletop Tuesday. I'm sorry I'm a little late. Life. Life happens. Shit goes down. All that jazz. Proud last week. Uh, we got Fedorian Jury with Doot Doot Doot. Why isn't just fireballed my goddamn tavern? God damn it. And we had a French ad, apparently. Sout uh, I don't speak French, so... Okay, I'll go with that. I speak French at a very basic high school level. <laughs> I do the same for about German. Mm. <clears throat> like, I know enough German to get myself in trouble. And usually to get my wife to yell at me. It's mostly about your... I, my, my pronunciation is very, very bad. <laughs> yeah, normally you're in trouble for your pronunciation. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, I had, <coughs> I had a great uncle who was a professor of German. Oh. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've only picked up a few words here and there. My favorite word is um, is schmetterling. What does that one mean? Butterfly. Oh, pretty. <laughs> I mean, for a German word. Yeah, for a German word, it's pretty. Yeah. Also, um, the rough translation for ambulance in German is broken person wagon. Broken person wagon. What was okay. that? Like? Uh, or sick vehicle. I've heard it. Okay. I've heard it referred to as both, but the word is Krankenwagen. Krankenwagen. Yeah. Very nice. Wisen says my favorite French word is foy. It means a sheet, like a sheet of paper. Oh yeah, there's uh, like milfoy, foy, milfoy. Uh, is that a flower or a dessert? I forget which. Yeah. I've seen seen the word. All right, so let's uh, let's get the announcements done real quick. Um, we have our sponsor, Foreseeable Future, uh, Shockbike Gaming Servers. Link is down below. Two dollars fifty cents for that. Um, we always have our artists that we're always tempting to assist, and we have a new artist to add to it named Art Gallery. That that was their name. So here are the links, Broken Winnie, Yamak Arts, and Art Gallery. So check them out. They could always use your commissions, especially Art Gallery. Uh, they told me that they're in need to ha have help pay rent. So any assistance could be appreciated. <clears throat> With that being said, <clears throat> let's transition <clears throat> to what we were looking at, <clears throat> which is our discussion today. The one D&D &D expert classes. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so changes everybody should know with one D&D. &D. Some of the things have been changed already from the previous edition. I'm not sure if you caught that camera. Mm. Uh, it wasn't labeled here, but they did label it on their website. The okay. criticals for only players has been tossed. Okay. They, they got such a hatred feedback from that they're just like nope no nope, we're not keeping this <laughs> it's like i mean it didn't didn't bug me but yeah okay there were a lot of dms that are like this is dumb as hell and there were even a lot of players that are going this is dumb as hell uh, i mean i've seen other games do similar things um yeah i well. i <clears throat> i didn't think it was that big of a deal but apparently it, it was big enough that they changed it almost immediately sure all right, so what these guys are doing, and I'm not sure if you caught this with this document. I saw it on their website. They are doing class groups. Yes, I had seen that. So And certain feats will only be available to certain class groups. Yes. All right, which is an easier way of doing, like, you have to be a spellcaster to do this feat. <clears throat> It's sure. nice. To, it's nice to see the other class groups get something unique. And let's yeah, be let's uh, be brutally honest. We've been doing this from the 
from the get-go, uh, us as the community. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly a, a better take than, like, the, the class roles that they had in 4th edition, like oh, Striker God. and... I hated um, those. Controller and yeah, that that it's it's very MMOE. This feels more natural. It's like these classes are kind of similar because of you know what the way they interact with the game. Now there's one expert class that is not labeled in the um, in this book. Okay, and that is a. I feel like that's a problem. They should have honestly just done it before releasing this book. Okay. And that's Artificers labeled as an expert class. Ah, I see. And I was like, if you're going to label it as an expert class, why wasn't it with the other expert classes when you released them? My guess would be, is it actually going to be a PHB class? They've already said it is. Okay. Well, so then the playtest materials may just be focusing on things that people already had as a php class since artificer you didn't used to be one that's yeah. not quite the, the apples to apples comparison i suppose um <clears throat> Hon, do you know where my burger is was it on the table yes fuck i threw it away no, i thought it was roses you're fine no babe not all that hungry anyway i was just wondering because i was gonna put it in the fridge okay i'm sorry you're fine uh, thank you, Taylor Ham, for the check-in. I appreciate that. Hun, can you hand me the, the wooden cup? Seeing as we are... You keep saying that needs to get washed. And I'm just using it as a prop, so there's that. All right. <clears throat> so, the class groups, uh, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, so forgive me. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Now you can see it. Yeah, I've got good visibility on it. All right, so experts. Um, okay, there's the, the reason right here. Our advisor is also an expert. That class appears in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and Aberon Rising from the Last War, not the Player's Handbook. So they're focusing on the Player's Handbook first. Yep, that that's kind of what I was thinking. Yep. Uh, anybody who's an expert class gets the expertise feature now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Anybody who's an arcane gets their their standard stuff. Uh, clerics, druids, and paladins are all labeled as priests. And they're building them focused on healing and utility and defense. So we are going to... Uh, one of the things they have mentioned is they're going to start taking away the damage spells. Or not make the damage spells as prevalent in the divine spell list. I mean... That's the, the clerics have always had some decent divine like damage spells, but they're never they've never really you know held a candle to like wizards in that department. Well, here here's where I would argue differently. Wizards are great for damage up to about level three ish in cl spell levels. All right, three is three is where you get the awesome <laughs> spell damage oh, abilities. All right, but when you look at damage output though they do not hold a candle to clerics at high level the cleric I, damage spells at high level are massively brutal i mean you're talking about what like earthquake that kind of thing uh earthquake is one thing but like there are others that are involved um sick of your shit. we are sick of your shit um there's um flame strike flame strike is that's not that high level though that's not like a fifth it, level. Yeah, it's a fifth level spell. It's the, the problem with Flame Strike in comparison is, uh, I mean, it does have a higher D6 cap and it does half divine damage, but the the fireball radius, uh, and at a you know third level slot, fireball I think is just superior to Flame Strike. Oh, it is. It's just Flame Strike's better for like not a group of targets, but like one big target. I mean, I, I guess uh, it is nice that it gets around some damage reduction, but uh, like I said, I, I, I've always... that That's actually one of the spells I would point out and say, this is why clerics aren't as good at damage. Right. Because, yeah, they get flame strike at fifth level. But also, you got the inflict spells. And, I mean, and, and inflict scales really quickly. Especially in fifth ed. 
I don't know the difference in fifth ed, um, uh, but I can read it off. Give me a second. Inflict wounds, five e. Um, it, it it's like does my hand smell bad to you kind of shit. Uh, I like the, I so the for a first level spell, when you touch a target, they take three d ten necrotic damage. Every spell slot higher increases it by another d10. So, inflict wounds 5e, it starts at 3d10 damage. It starts at 3d10. Wow. Yeah, that it is. got a serious upgrade. Yeah, it is really powerful. That's why I said clerics are damage dealers in 5th ed. The, but, like, spiritual weapon also got a buff too. I mean, spiritual weapon is nice. It, it is nice. It's not like oodles and oodles and oodles of damage, but it's it's remote. Uh, here, here it is. Every time you hit, you do 1d8 plus your skill, caster ability, modifier as a bonus action on your turn. Mm -hmm. And it can, it can move up to 20 feet. It can attack any creature you want. Um, and any time you cast a spell higher than it, uh, the damage increases by... 1d8 for every two cell slots above second. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad. I, I don't, I still don't think it holds a candle to wizards. I mean, I'm intrigued by this change to inflict wounds. I didn't really look at it when I was looking at cleric yeah. stuff because I just don't tend to run inflict. But um, I, I guess the downside there is that, you know, it is a melee spell attack. You're, you're going to have to, you know, touch whoever it is. Oh, yeah. Give me a second. There's other ones. Uh, Clark spell is. <coughs> Excuse me, why I choke on my lungs? Uh, there was one. Where was it? Uh, it's a massive AOE ability, and it's like fucking insane. Um, it's like guardian spirits or spirit Dang guardians it, or something. Spirit uh, guardians. There we go. Yeah. This one. All right. You call forth spirits to protect you. They're always 10, 15 feet around you. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, any creatures you want to designate are unaffected by it. Any affected creature gets half speed in the area. Uh, and they make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed welcome, save, traveler. every... Uh, welcome, Super Gogeta, to the tavern. Grab yourself a mug of ale. Pull up a chair. Have fun. And don't fireball my tavern. Welcome, as we were discussing D&D &D stuff. Um, here's where it gets broken. It is concentration up to 10 minutes long. Every round they're in it, they take 3d8 damage. Whether it's radiant or necrotic. Sure. And if they, even if they save, they only take half damage. Yeah, I mean, that that one's great because of the crowd control aspects more than anything else. So the, the damage is good, too. But, yeah, that's a tremendous crowd control spell. Yeah, it, it, um, you, you spread it, that damage over a mass area, it can easily add up faster than Fireball. Fireball's one big burst because Fireball has a cap. It's, it's, sure. It's 8d6. Sure, yeah. That's all it can do, ever. Is 86 unless you upcast it by a lot. Where a lot of the cleric spells, if you upcast them, they do a lot of damage real quick. Uh, they also have a cantrip called Toll of the Dead. Does yeah, it, Toll of the Dead's nice. D12, I mean, that's really cool. Um, it does a D12 if the target's injured, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the Smurf check-in, uh, Super Gogeta, for the, and also the Vibe Nation. Uh, let's see, fifth level is where they start getting the crazy shit. There's Flame Strike. Uh, there's Holy Weapon. Uh, Summon Celestial. Blade Barrier. Harm. I mean... Keep in mind that I'm going mostly on previous editions because I haven't gone yeah. that deep into 5e. Harm is was for the lo a longest time the single target damage champ and yeah, uh, it may still be they toned it down and this, good but this is what it does they have to make a constitution saving throw on a failed save they do 14 d6 necrotic damage mm -hmm. half as much on a, a save successful save 
and it cannot reduce the target's HP below one. Demon, drop the shoe! Okay. If the target fails at saving throw, its hit point maximum is reduced by the amount of damage it took. Sure. So that's the new cool effect it gave it. Uh, Sunbeam. Oh boy. I, I mean, most of the cleric spells have, like, the, the damaging ones have limitations. And, like, uh, Spirit Guardians is a good one. That's a 15 foot radius around you. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it basically just. You still have to get close enough to hug the people you want to hurt. Yeah. Um, Whereas wizards can reach out and crush someone. Yeah, there's Firestorm. That's 70, 10 fire damage. Uh, earthquake is level 8. Sunburst. And then... Yeah, and wizards get shit like Disintegrate and Horrid Wilting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not saying that wizards are bad at damage i'm saying that clerics tend to be what people want for the higher level casters versus wizards uh, well again i will say i'm not uh, familiar with high level fifth edition play i i will say that is absolutely not true in pathfinder yeah. and previous editions um there's either way toys. Hey, what's your toy? uh then warriors they have barbarian fighter and monk which mm -hmm. they're <clears throat> They're not changing too much on that so far, from what I heard. Uh, any, if you pick a class group, all the, uh, that class group gets the same uh, proficiencies and armor trainings of that class. Which I'm not exact. Oh no, it's class description. Sorry, create a member of the class. That's not class group. My bad. Okay. Uh, bards. They fixed Bard, where it now has the, um, their subclasses have more abilities, which helps. Mm -hmm. Um, their Bard against Inspiration at low level no, hurts, get down. but yeah, you, it gets get better later. It less. Yeah. yeah. I'm here to, and just eating and lurking, greasing hands. Hey man, no problem. I appreciate that. Um, so I don't hate the inspiration for that aspect, but they did weaken it as a buff. Or I wouldn't say weaken it, I'd say side shifted it. Yeah. Because now it's using up your reaction. Yep. Which makes bards now reaction heavy. It, it, yeah. Um. Especially with Songs of Restoration. And I, I've already heard some DMs already bitching about how much harder it is going to be to challenge their players or kill their players. Why is that? Because Song of Restoration is a reaction. Uh huh. So you drop the fighter to zero Sit. HP. Song of Restoration, fighters Sit. back up. He didn't drop. Sit. That's fantastic. Oh yeah, Sit. it makes the characters way more durable. Sit. No. Sit. Um, if I was honestly playing a bard at that point, uh, I would probably save most of my inspiration dice for Songs of Restoration. Right, but it, it restores like a few hit points, like an inspiration die worth of hit points, right? Right. Yeah. But that's still better than someone having to make death saves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Death yeah. saves are no fun, which is why I, I assume they did this. Yeah, uh, the other thing, though, they did, and this is where the wording I don't like. I feel like some wording needs to be fixed. Okay. With Inspiration Dice, you can only give it to someone for a check if they failed the check. Um, and the reason why I don't like that is there are knowledge checks like Arcana, Religion, History... Where you will pass, but you could get more information if you pass better. And I feel like that's a problem. I, I, I feel like that, I feel like a slight rewrite to that, where it removes the failed aspect of the check. Like, uh, they roll their check, they get the result, but like before the result's answer is given, you can give them the inspiration die. 
Uh, there's been a, a movement with these 1 D&D &D rules that I've been reading about to basically uh, a lot of players were playing uh, re-roll abilities and extra die abilities such that you could use them after the roll results, which is not how they're written in the core rules, but people right. felt it was more fun to play them that way. And so Wizards has basically said, yeah, we're, we're just going to make those kinds of abilities usable after you know the result. That way you can change the result. And I think it's fine. <coughs> it, it's like a minor gripe. Are you all right? Yeah. What? Leave it! Damien. Dog's acting up. He's going after my stuff on the couch. The dog is going after all my wife's shit on the couch. What, what is he going after? He you? literally just took my iron off the couch. Oh. Again. Buddy, you gotta stop that. Now he's hiding from me because he knows he's in trouble. Um, But the rest of the bard stuff I'm not really too concerned about. Um, They, they get the arcane list. Um... They're prepared casters now instead of spontaneous casters. Yes, that's an interesting change. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Some people say it's horrible. Some people say it's awesome. Damien! I'm kind of like, meh. Drop like, it! Damn it! It's like, uh, Wizen says, it's like allowing a rebuttal to a charisma check. Like in the movies when the hero says something dumb sounding and then sounds like a mad genius... Uh, with the take they come up with. I can see that. Um, but yeah, the, the change to prepared <coughs> casters is interesting. I no. wonder if... Uh, how many spontaneous casters we're going no. to actually end up with. I think we're only going to have two. Do you think Warlock and Sorcerer? I think they're, they're going to be the only ones. And I would be honestly surprised if Warlock stays a spontaneous caster. See, that's what I was uh, getting at. I'm, I'm thinking that spontaneous caster might be the sorcerer's thing. Yeah. I, I think that's the only thing I can think of. And that's if they just don't try to get rid of it entirely. I, I If you don't have spontaneous casting, I, I don't know how you distinguish the sorcerer from the other two. I agree. Uh, but... We'll have to see what happens when they do magic users. Um, nothing changes for multi-classing at all. Um, there's boosting the tiny test, prepared spells, air, much like a wizard or anything else. Uh, you automatically get the following spells prepared. Color spray, disguise self, precipitation, and vicious mockery. So you get those automatically. Which is a solid selection, very bardic. I, I dig it. Yeah, I can dig that too. The only one I probably wouldn't use out of all of that is color spray. Damn it! it would Drop certainly it. be my least uh, option. Yeah. He keeps trying to kill my yarn. Then move the fucking yarn! No! He's gonna learn to stay off my fucking couch! God damn. Uh, expertise hasn't changed. Songs of Restoration um, gives you the ability to use the following healing spells, which isn't terrible. Mine! Um, yep, I, I think that's a, a good solid list. Yeah. I... There's the subclasses, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, they changed the ability improvement, score improvement as a feat. So makes, that makes sense. Yeah, it's just paperwork shit, so it makes sense. Um, Jack of all trades is still there. Bardic uh, font of Bardic uh, inspiration. So nothing really crazy happens until level eleven, and then you get. Magical secrets. You should songify that. Damien, drop it. Drop, 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 drop it. Off that fucking couch. Drop it. Here's my fucking yarn. Drop it. That's wizen. My wife is giving you the death stare. Oh, goddamn. 
<laughs> now you get to babysit while I try and make myself a teacup. Yeah, hey buddy. She's like, love me so mom doesn't kill me. Yeah, love you so your mommy doesn't kill you. Magical Secrets has gotten definitely a buff. Yes. You get a whole spell list every time you get it. And by the time you hit max level, you will have all of them. Yep. Why is everything well, suddenly so quiet? Uh, don't know. I'll have to turn it back up. All right, there we go. Why is in Baha? I live for the death stairs. Um, but yeah, magical secret. So Bard starts out with about half of the arcane list because it's limited by school, isn't it? Normally, bards are limited by school. Magical secrets ignores that. Right. What I'm saying is, so you can use the two iterations of Magical Secrets to either pick up the entire Divine and entire Primal list, or you can give up one of those two to get the rest of the Arcane list. Yeah. So you can have two and a half <coughs> lists or two full lists if you want all the Arcane stuff. Yeah. To be brutally honest, if I was playing a Bard, I wouldn't pick the Arcane one for one simple reason. Because you have access to the Arcane list now... With the rules as written until unless they change them, you have access to all the arcane scrolls now. Oh, you mean like scrolls? Uh huh. Eh, I guess. You can get all your important spells that way that you normally wouldn't get access to. Scrolls and wands, man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it is nice to be able to to bust out the occasional fireball or whatnot um, yeah. without having to buy scrolls all the time. That's true. Um, College of Lore. Oh, okay. Let's talk about this because they nerfed it. They nerfed the lore hard. Um, lore used to be where you got the, the magical secrets, but they right. made that part of the base class now. So all they get now is bonus proficiencies, and it has to be in Arcana. You get Arcana, History, and Nature. Yep, and you get cutting words. Which used to be part of the main bard. Now they made it part of the lore bard. Um, what, cutting words? Yeah, they used to be part of the main bard. I thought that was one of the College of Lore things. It might have been. I could have sworn it was a main bard thing. I've only run into mainly lore bards, so... Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm pretty sure I got that specifically as my lore thing. Um, but yeah, the, the three skill proficiencies are Arcana, History, and Nature, unless you already have one of them, in which case you get a free pick. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah, and you're probably going to have those three anyway if you're a lore bard. Yep. Uh, cutting Words is not bad. It's kind of neat. Uh, uh, cu cunning Inspiration lets you have essentially advantage on your Bardic Inspiration die, which is nice. Yeah, Improved Cutting Words, which is Psychic Damage. Yeah. The least resisted damage type in the game. Yep. And then level 14, Peerless Skill. If you make an ability ah. check and fail, you get expend a Bardic Inspiration, roll the die, and add that number to the ability check, potentially turning into a success. Which just means you can inspire yourself. Right, but that last sentence there is the nice part. Yeah, if the skill check still fails, then it's not expended, which is nice. So essentially, anytime you make an ability check, if it's important, you can get that bonus. If you fail. You have to fail first. You don't get the sure. bonus unless you fail. Well, yes, but that that's the, like I said, if it's an important check that you don't want to fail. All right. One of the things I wanted to talk about before we get into Ranger, though, is the change to dual wielding. Okay. They made it so that every time you make an attack action, you get an attack with your offhand weapon. But you do not get your ability modifier. Right. On the offhand. That's important for something I'm about, about to point out for with Ranger. Ranger got a much needed buff. Mm hmm Because they were pretty shitty. To okay. Yeah, uh... Worst class. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about it. For one, they changed how favorite enemy works. Every enemy is now a favorite enemy. 
is basically all favorite enemy does is it gives you the hunter mark spell automatically prepared. It doesn't count the number of spells you can prepare. Moreover, you never have to concentrate it. Uh, and it's a bonus action to... Uh... <coughs> Excuse me. Bonus action to cough up your lungs. Yeah, bonus, sorry. Bonus action to cast it. And it's a bonus action to move it if your target is incapacitated. You can transfer it to a new target with a bonus yep. action. Now, it's not stated in this book, but it was stated in a question on the Wizards website. What happens if you have Hex and Hunter's Mark on the same target? Mm -hmm. uh, and that target goes down. What can you do? It is, according to what they've written so far until they change it, a bonus action will move them both. That, I think, will not survive playtest. I don't think it will either, because it's broken as shit. And here's the reason why. Everybody gets a feat at level 1. If you're playing a ranger, take... Um, Is it Arcane Adept or... Yeah, Arcane Adept or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it gives you a first level spell. Take Hex. Hex gives you 1d6 extra damage, and you choose an ability that they have disadvantage on. Whoa. Uh, it's an ability check thing. Yeah. The thing you're aiming for is the 1d6 damage. The Hunter's Mark gives you 1d6 damage. Yep. So every time you hit the enemy, you're doing 2d6 plus your weapon's damage, which they've now made short swords a light, simple weapon. Uh -huh. Which means you dual-wield short swords, do 6d6 plus whatever your ability modifier is once. Yeah. As a first level character, that is normally damage you would not see until third or fourth level. Yeah, so you you can definitely put the herd on a single target, but uh, yeah. yeah, I think they are definitely if if they put on their site that you can move both of those spells with a, the same bonus action, then they are ignoring their own rules. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I I do not foresee that that would survive because. Yeah, essentially you're getting a free extra bonus action, which yeah. is bullshit. Yeah, that is bullshit. They turned rangers into prepared spellcasters. Um, they used to be prepared, were they not, in 5th edition? Oh, no, no, no. There, There's more to it than that. They're also full casters. Yes, I was aware of that change, but... Yeah, they're prepared full casters. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I would have liked to see with ranger to differentiate them from the druid was make them a spontaneous primal caster. Huh. I feel like that could be interesting. Sure. It's not a, a niche that we've really explored before. No, we haven't. We've had spontaneous divine casters, like, you know, uh, in Pathfinder we have the Oracle. My favorite. Uh, but we never had... A spontaneous wild caster. And I feel like that could be an interesting idea. If anything, maybe a subclass that does that. Could could be cool. I feel like a subclass that changes the spell casting to that could be an interesting route to explore. Sure. Um they get fighting styles. Uh so that's neat. They get like all those fighter fighting styles. They get those too. Um, they get the extra attack at 5th level. Uh, at 7th level their speed increases by 10 feet. And you also get a climb and swim speed equal to your speed. Now that I think is really cool. That is a, a really nice thing that uh, I don't know why they didn't do for Rangers sooner. I agree with the climb and swim speed. That is neat, and I love that idea. Maybe not the 10 feet movement increase. Yeah, uh, I can take or leave it. It's not a deal breaker, but it was just like, ah, it seems a bit much, but we'll go with it. Um, They're tireless. They get temporary hit points whenever they finish a short or a long rest. Uh, and they decrease exhaustion on a short rest. Which is neat. Yeah. And they're uh, all, all very thematic. All very thematic. I will say, though, they're changing the exhaustion table. 
Okay. They did say they're doing that. They're saying the current exhaustion table is too deadly. Okay. And I can agree with that. Can't say that I've run into it uh, many times. Um, give me a second. I'll pull it up. No, it's not, it's okay. We don't have to go into it. I just haven't run into it many times. Yeah, it is. There it is. First level disadvantage on all your ability checks. Two speed halved. Three disadvantage on all attack rolls. Saving throws. Four, your hit point maximum is halved. Five, your speed is zero. Six, you're dead. Damn. And there is a spell that is really, really, really crazy deadly with it. And it's, um, I'm trying, I was trying to remember the name of the spell and I just did Sickening Radiance. Greenish light, 30 foot radius, center on the point you choose. Uh, the light spreads around all corners, lasts until the spells last. Any creature that moves into the spell's area or starts its turn there has to succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 40, 10 radiant damage and it suffers one level of exhaustion. Uh, and you can move it. Uh, there is an ability later on that can cause this to move. Okay. Uh, and it says the levels of exhaustion go away when the spell ends. Yes. Uh, uh, squiggly Rider, radiation poisoning, and Fedorian's like, yeah. Like, yeah, it is. It's essentially radiation. Um... There is a whole teamwork thing you can do with it where you throw it down, you have your primal caster throw down thorn area to half their movement already. And then you have four people on each end of the cloud. Just punch them back into the cloud with force movement feats. Yeah. And uh, nothing survives. Uh, so there's that. Because very few things are immune to uh, exhaustion damage. Sure. The only thing is like constructs, essentially. Undead aren't? Uh, there are some undead that are, and some that undead that are not. In That's fifth weird. Uh, they made it so that intelligent undead can suffer exhaustion. For the spellcasters, mainly. Um... Uh, so there is that. Uh, 15th level rangers get uh, feral senses. They get blind sight up to 30 feet. Very and, cool. And I like that. That's kind of neat. Um, at 18th level, you get foe slayer. Your hunter's mark does a d10 now instead of a d6. So fun times there. Um. Uh, they have some fun, like, secondary things. Um, so there's that. Then we got Rogue. I am going to say right now, Rogue really didn't change much from what it was before. Okay. All right. The biggest change was Sneak Attack. Uh, and I mentioned this in the Discord. I'm going to mention it on the stream now. They changed it to where the wording was uh, once per turn. Uh, they change from from that to once on every each of your turns. So that is the wording change they made. So they basically stated you no longer get sneak attack unless it's your turn. Ah, I see. That is the issue rogue players are having right now. They are literally foaming at the mouth on this shit. Then they need to calm the fuck down, but yeah, okay, it's a it's a mild annoyance. You can't use it on attacks of opportunity. Yeah, but the problem is there are several rogue builds that are specifically designed for attacks of opportunity. Yeah, but some builds aren't going to work as well in a, the new edition. Yeah. Boo hoo. <laughs> <coughs> I'm not a big fan of that change. Do I think I'm going to lose my mind over it? No, I'm just more like, ah, I don't like it. It's kind of dumb. But, hey, it is what it is. Like, if I ever ran a game, I would just probably keep Rogues as the 5th Ed variant. <clears throat> and just leave it be. Um, 
But the rest of the stuff is still very much what the rogues normally get, except their 20th levels move to 18. And that's it. That's the big change. Damn it, really? Did you just pee? Yeah, right on his blanket. Oh my god. Do you um, still need to have advantage on the attack roll to trigger it? Uh, no. You can have advantage or have an ally adjacent to target, and that was still... Uh, okay. It was still the same in 5th ed. Yeah, okay. It, it was one or the other. Like, I don't consider the rogue, like, the biggest, oh my god, this is dumb as shit. It's just more of, like, it has that one feature that was just like, that's kind of stupid, but meh. But every class, or every edition does that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every every edition of D&D has had something that we've gone, like, that's kind of dumb. And we kind of just shrug it off and call it a day. Yeah, um, like I said, I, I don't think it, it's going to be any skin off my nose. Yeah. Um, oh, excuse me. There are a ton of feats in here. Uh, some of them have gotten buffs. Others have gotten weaknesses. I've already ch stated what dual wielding does. Uh, yeah. It also gives you a quick draw for free. Nice. So there's that. So it's kind of neat. Um, I'm trying to think of anything stood out to me that was crazy. All the epic boons. Um, the... Oh, some of them are really not that great, and others are like, oh, this is really cool. Like, the epic boon of combat prowess is one where I'd label as not great. Which is, if you miss with a melee attack, you hit instead. And you can use it once per, per combat. Yeah. That's it. And I'm I... like... I'm like, that. Ah, I feel like there could have been better epic boons for a melee character. It's pretty cool, though. You know, you basically, if you're uh, in a situation where you are, uh, you desperately need to put the bad guy down, maybe this gets you that guaranteed hit that you need. Yeah, I would say, like, I'm not saying it's horrible. It's just more of, this is very lackluster for me. You could also use it with like a a, uh, a weapon in the environment that you're not proficient with. Like, oh hey, we've got a cannon here. <laughs> Nobody's proficient in siege weaponry, but uh, if we could hit the dragon, with that know, cannon. it's melee attack. Oh okay. Well, still, you could use it with like some kind of big awkward weapon that you could normally uh, barely struggle to wield. Yeah. Uh, boon of dimensional travel is kind of cool. Uh, you can cast misty step without expending a spell slot. Uh, and it requires an expert or mage group. So and that's per encounter yeah, or it, short rest or long rest. You can't use it until you roll initiative or finish a short rest or long rest. I don't know why they put short rest or long rest on top of initiative when literally it, it, you're not going to short or long rest while combat's going on. No, but you could use Misty Step out of combat to bypass some kind of puzzle situation. Uh, yeah, I guess. But it's... that's that's why they're they're setting it that way. I can see that then. Um, Boon of Energy Resistance is kind of okay. Uh, Boon of Fortitude is kind of neat. You get forty extra HP. Leave it. So that can be helpful. That's a nice chunk. This is the one I thought was way better than the Combat Prowess one. Expert or Warrior Group, the damage you deal always ignores resistance. That is way better than, oh, I missed an attack, I hit once. I think they need to errata that uh, to say, like, weapon damage or something, because yeah. otherwise it could apply to spell damage, but... Well, it's only for expert and warrior groups. Warriors yeah, don't but... get spells at all, and only two, yeah, two of the three experts get spells. Yes, but you know that there's bard that can have any damaging spell in the game, ignoring resistance. It's nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the epic boon of luck is pretty good. It's only for experts. Uh, you get advantage on your luck roll. Uh, or, no, it's I mean you after a d20 test, you add another d10 to it, which is helpful. 
Uh, epic boon of night spirit. When you're in dim light or darkness, you can become invisible as an action. That is stupidly helpful. Oh, yes. Like, I see this being used a lot. Uh, peerless God, I, aim. Go ahead. I was going to say God, yes. Uh, peerless aim is the same as combat prowess, except now it's a ranged weapon. Remember how oh, you were talking about... Now you can use the cannon. Now you can use the cannon. That's that one. Uh, epic boon of recovery. Uh, as a bonus action, you regain a number of hit points equal to half your hit point maximum. So that's good for your, like, barbarian... Ooh. I like that last sentence. In addition, you succeed on every saving throw that isn't a roll of a one. Or every death saving throw. Yeah, every death saving throw that isn't a one. That is still really cool. So you could be like a barbarian or a paladin or a fighter. Take that. And that's a lot of fucking HP back. Epic boon of Chumba Wumba. You get knocked down, but you get up again. Yeah. Um, epic boon of skill proficiency. Now you have proficiency in all skills. Uh, epic, epic bonus speed. Your speed increases 30 feet. Oh, there are items and other abilities that do that better. <clears throat> that don't eat up an epic boon. <clears throat> epic boon of undetectability. You cannot be seen or heard by any means, magical or non magical, while you are hidden. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I would take that if I was a rogue. Because it's like, I'm going to be the stealthiest stab bitch ever. Um, yep. And then the last epic boon. Epic boon of the unfettered. As a bonus action, you can disengage action, which also ends grappled and the constraint conditions against you. Kind of like what the rogue used to have. Everybody in expert and warrior can get it now at level 20. Um, the fighting styles didn't really change much. Um... Other than two-weapon fighting, which allows you to add your ability modifier to your offhand. Mm -hmm. So, yay there. Uh, oh, the other big change they made. Uh, Polearm Master and Sentinel do not work together. Oh. They removed that combo. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's Polearm Master, blah, blah, Reactor Strike... Down. Down. Uh, use your reaction to make one melee attack. Da, da, da. Where's Sentinel? Um, creature strengths or immediately creature takes a disengage action or hits a target. No. Other than you with an attack, you can make an opportunity attack to halt uh, against that creature. Damien. Uh, whenever you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, that creature speed becomes zero until the rest of the turn. Notice it said not an attack of opportunity. They have to do disengage or target another creature with an attack. So if they move out of your range, you can't use Sentinel now. Damien. Um, mm, no. So Sentinel, if they move out of your range, they're going to trigger an opportunity attack. But if they take the disengage action, normally they wouldn't, but now with gu gu the Guardian feature, they do. Yeah. So you're still triggering an opportunity attack so you can whack them and keep them right where it is. Um, you can't do the combo with Polearm Master because you're getting a special reactive strike that is not an opportunity attack. attack. So you're correct I... that they do not play together, but... For the wrong does. reasons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't They no longer mesh well. Yeah, they, they, they do not do... like the. Basically, the uh, reaction strike from Polar Master is no longer an opportunity attack, which is what Sentinel depends on. Yep. Uh, Warcaster apparently got a buff, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, I don't see anything that's really changed. Like, advantage on Constitution, saving throws. Whenever a creature provokes an attack of opportunity, you can use a spell instead. Uh, and I think the only one may be the somatic components, but I think they had that too. Damien. So, I'm not sure what the change was that people were yelling about earlier. Yeah, I don't, don't know. Yeah. And then they have their glossary here. Move it. So, that is... These guys. 
Uh, so let's check out Rogue 5e. Uh, the handbook. Where's the wiki? I don't want to use. I want to use wiki dot because that gives me more of the information I want. Because the the uh, the main site does not let me um, get access to the base information. Hey, what? Crawl. Hey, man. How's it going? All right, let's go back to just chatting. I don't need the screen up constantly. There we go. All right, let's talk about rogues in 5e and then rogues in Pathfinder. Because there's some differences between the two. Rogues, they are these... Uh, it's going. Uh, they are these stabby boys. They are the ones in shadows. They're usually the ones with dead parents in the background. They're they're the edge lords. <laughs> Fedoria relevant. I don't know why. So let's talk about five E rogues. All right, you are all about being sneaky and stabby. Five um, E rogues tend to be more geared towards combat than skills. Uh, yeah. Than their Pathfinder counterpart. Yep. But they're still decent. Uh, for stats, uh. You, you need dex in 5e, hands down. It's your most important stat. It's your dexter it's your skills, your tools, your attacks, your damage, your AC, and your best save. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Con is like an important intelligence if you're going to be like an investigating type rogue. Maybe. Uh, wisdom, charisma, not bad choices, but not great choices, and strength is worthless. In yeah, you're gonna want to. You're gonna want a finesse weapon. It's not gonna depend on your strength at all. Yeah. Uh, for races, you're looking for anything that helps you sneak better, anything that does more dex to you. If you're still working with the racial bonuses. Um. And there are a few races that do some kooky stuff. I would say, um, hey, let, let me see if there's anything that stands out for me, other than, of course, the flyy people. Um, Damien? <clears throat> excuse me while I choke on my lungs here. Uh, elf is always good. Yeah. Fedorian, hey, race min maxing equals nap time. <laughs> Funny. Uh, High Elf is a good choice. Uh, Drow is not a bad choice. Um, depends on what kind of campaign you're going for. Fairy is an amazing choice because you're small and you stab things. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like I stab you in the eye. Uh, Goblin's a good choice. Again, you're short. Guess where you're going to stab? Yeah. Uh, Half Elf's a pretty good choice. Halfling's a decent choice. Oh, yes. Again, junk stab. Uh, Kenku is a good choice. Kobold is an amazing choice uh, for rogues. Anything that's short tends to be a good sh choice, or anything small. Um, Seder is a good choice. Get off the couch! Tabaxi's a good choice. Uh, Tiefling's got a couple good options. Uh, yeah. and that's about it. Like, I'm not gonna go into great details. Just On your back. covering that. Yeah. On. Um, because there's too many goddamn Here. races. <laughs> Here. Um, then we got Sit. subclasses. Let's talk about that real quick. Stay. Arcane Trickster is an amazing Stay. rogue. Hands down. Uh, it's a classic. Let it go. I mean, you get enchantment and illusion spells. That gives you so much utility. Here. Plus mm -hmm. all kinds of crazy other shit. Here. And you can use your Sit. your mage hand ledger domain. <laughs> which is really Sit. hard to beat. Yeah. I wonder if Fedorian's woken back <laughs> up yet since we stopped talking about races. 
<laughs> Someone hit her with a shucky stick. Um, so there is that. Assassin. It tricks are fun times. I'm going to say this about 5th Ed Assassin. Some people say they're good. I don't. And there's a reason behind it. You have to go first and not be noticed. Mm. Which does happen often, don't get me wrong. But it's something that you actually have to actively work towards. And it's something that newer players will not be able to easily pull off. So Yeah, it does require a bit of setup. Yeah, Assassin requires a good deal of setup, and that's... Mm, need some work. Inquisitive is okay. Um, if you ever want to be like a Sherlock Holmes type character, honestly, play a ranger. They'll, bard. Or a bard. They're both better at it than the Inquisitive is. But you can still have fun with it. Um, Phantom. I, I love the comment under this class. It said, someone made a comment. It was like, okay, but what if Ouija boards were a subclass? That's good. That's really good because you're all about talking with dead people. It's like, I see dead people. I know I see dead people because I've sent most of them there. <laughs> Uh, I Mas see dead people, and two of them are my parents. Yeah, oh god. <laughs> uh, mastermind is the opposite of inquisitive. Instead of the person hunting the criminals and investigating crimes, you are now the person doing the crimes. Better fit for the rogue, I think. It is a better fit, but the problem with mastermind is the same issue that assassin has. Yeah, lots setup. of lots of setup, lots of intrigue. Not great for a new player. It's something and, that I. It's something that an experienced player would be better with. And also, I would say that it's something that it's going to be very campaign dependent. Your your GM's going to have to basically support that decision, and it could be it could mean that you're not playing the same kind of game as everybody else. Yeah. Uh, Scout is kind of interesting but to be brutally honest ranger the new ranger does better than this um the new ranger anyway the one dnd &D ranger yeah uh if you're not using one dnd &D, they can easily compete with rangers uh soul knife hi do you want to be psylocke because <laughs> that's psylocke Everybody wants to be Psylocke. Did he pee again? God damn it. Um, and you get some cool psionic powers, which is kind of neat. Um, but you are always armed. Your enemy will never be able to stop you uh, from being armed. Yeah. And, and then there's, of course, the ability at 13th level where you get once a day for free an invisibility that lasts an hour. Very nice. That is really potent. Uh, Swashbuckler, great class, great subclass. If you want to put be the, you know, Dread Pirate Roberts and all that shit, by all means, go for this. Everybody wants to be the Dread Pirate Roberts. Oh, God damn it. Uh, Thief is iconic rogue. It's stereotypical. It's decent. I wouldn't call it amazing, but it's not terrible. So that's the archetype, uh, the subclasses. I always want to call them archetypes, but that's not the case. Uh, for skills, perception, most rolled skill in the game by gods, take that skill. Yep. Damien, what spell are you doing on? Stealth. Uh, stealth, naturally. Persuasion. Uh, it's good to have, even if you're not the party's face. Or, or Deception. Nope. Or Deception, yeah. Those are both really good. I highly recommend it. Um, uh, excuse me while I try not to choke on my lungs again. 
if you're playing the face, insight, intimidation are also needed. Um, investigation is still helpful. So yes. I mean, those are all good. Uh, backgrounds, charlatan is good. Courtier is good if you want to be a face character. Oh god, we're getting raided. The wild Zanthier. Woot woot. Welcome raiders. Uh, make sure you hit the little button down below that uh, refreshes the page so that you're watching me and I get the credit and all that jazz. Uh, hey Bryn, hey Percy. Uh, welcome, welcome to the tavern, everyone. Grab your drinks. It's time for learning some D and D. If you don't know who I am, I am the Ruby Mad Hatter. My partner in crime, who's the other voice you hear, is Candy Gamera. Hello. Uh, we we tend to. God damn it, Wizen! Stop fireballing people. Uh, as you can see, the the tavern is very lively. <laughs> oh my god! Behind me on the couch is Anne. It's good fucking. Oh, I was gonna do it if Squidgy didn't. God damn you, people! <laughs> Wild Death here. Good tavern is always lively, very lively. They were standing in a the crowd. They were asking for it. Oh my god. Uh, every now and then you'll see a black dog around here somewhere. I don't know where he went now. Uh, He's trying to chew cardboard. Okay. Uh, that's my, my puppy, Damien. So okay. you'll see him. Yell that a lot um, Tuesdays, we sit here and we talk about D&D, &D, educating people on the classes, the tabletop stuff, give you guys some advice on how to basically make a better game. And to learn from the mistakes we made when we were newer. So there's that. Yes. If someone throws a player's handbook at your head, uh, duck. Duck. <laughs> yeah. Dodge. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah. The five Ds of D&D. &D. The five Ds of D&D. &D. Oh, my God. Is this a no Pathfinder allowed tavern? No, no. We talk. We actually are both big Pathfinder players. I just use the yeah. term D and D because that's the term everybody understands easier. But yeah. we are we are definitely both Pathfinder guys. Like that's my preferred system is Pathfinder First Edition. Yep. I think Pathfinder One E is my my favorite. Uh, I mean, I like Five E for introducing new players. It's a great streamlined D twenty derivative. Was that you? But if I was going to run a what? campaign, was that, sound? Was that you or was that the dog? I think I've been a dog. Um. So there is that. Uh, Mondays, we do multiplayer Monday, where I play some sort of multiplayer game with my friends. Uh, Candid and Gamera and I, we play Stellaris every other week. The opposing week is Inquisition and I, where we're currently playing Subnautica multiplayer. Uh, so there is that. Though, occasionally, I try to do events where I incorporate the audience into fun games like Goose Goose Duck and stuff. Which, uh, we should probably do that one day, Gamera. Uh, not familiar with it ever heard of the game among us i have yes it is a more advanced version of among us that's free okay and almost more violent. um and it has proximity chat built into the game neat you don't have to mod it in like you do with uh among us so that's very handy i need a hug you need a hug okay before i kill the puppy at this point i love you I should probably do at least Anne's intro. Uh, Fedorian gives you air hugs. By kissing their boo-boos and slapping the bitch who made the boo-boo. <clears throat> um, Wednesdays is Wild Card Wednesday, where I basically play whatever random game the players want me, uh, you viewers want me to play, and I will play it. It's 5,000 critical rolls to do it. Oh, this is the dog. This is Damien. Hey, puppy. Oh. Oh, God, he's back on my lap. I can actually get some of my tea without having to monitor him. Ugh. Hey, buddy. I would like to drink my teacup hey, buddy. before it gets cold for once. He's a puppies. He's, what, 16 weeks old now? 
17 weeks. 17 yeah, somewhere he's, in that range. He's going to be big. Yeah, he's going to be 75 pounds. Between 60 and 80. They said 60 and 80. So I, I, I picked the middle. It's at 75. Somewhere 70, 75. Yeah. And now he's licking my arm. <laughs> um, hi, buddy. Hi. You, you good now? Okay. Um, other fun backgrounds, though, as we were talking about for 5th Ed Rogues. Uh, faction Agent, Criminal, uh, Urban Bounty Hunter, and Urchin. Yeah. Uh, urchin. Classic Urchin Rogue. Yep. For feats, alert is good because that plus five initiative. Um, Lucky's good for everybody as usual. Yeah, Lucky's always good for everyone. Inspiring leader is pretty good if you're a charisma build. Uh, sharpshooter. Yeah. Uh, Bread. Hey, let's go. How are we doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing all right. My voice hurts a little bit, but I'm okay. Uh, skilled is good. Skulker is also good. And those are the good feats. If you want weapons, uh, dagger, unless you're using 1D&D, &D and uh, short swords, uh, and rapier. Mm. And for armor, studded leather. Uh, yeah. They don't exactly multi-class well, though. There's nothing that stands out multi-classing. Uh, gotcha, I hope you feel better, but thank you. Thank you very much. Now let's talk about Pathfinder Rogues, because, oh boy, we have, <laughs> we have a lot of Pathfinder. This is more of what we do. Um, Dex is still important, but so is intelligence now. Yes. You want to be able to cover skills, and uh, yeah, a couple of your key skills are actually keyed off intelligence. Yep. Khan is a good third... Uh, wisdom, charisma, fourth and fifth, and strength last. Because there right. is Unchained Rogue, which I honestly recommend playing over a standard rogue every time. Yep. Because it lets you add dex to damage. Yeah. Um, unchained options were straight upgrades as far as I'm concerned, except the Summoner, which was a necessary nerf. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for races... Elf is amazing for rogues. Halfling's amazing for rogues. Human's amazing for fucking everything. Yep. Anything that gives you dex and intelligence uh, and possibly takes away from strength, good choices. Um, with that, we're going to go into traits because Pathfinder has those wonderful traits. Reactionary is a beautiful one because that plus two initiative. Sure. Uh, pragmatic activator is good if you don't have charisma as a high stat. Yeah. Um, That's a good thought. Yeah. Elven reflexes if you're a half elf. Um, so that's kind of helpful. Ooh, Wizen has a good question. Um, carrying gear with low strength characters. Here, um, here's the thing. As a rogue, you're not the one mostly carrying gear. Um, the uh, you're at least at low levels. At low levels, you're not going to be carrying a lot of gear. That is for your strength characters to do, like your barbarians, yep. your fighters, your paladins, those guys. Have um, yeah, you, you don't need a whole campsite on your back as a rogue. Uh, but once you get up to, I want to say level five to seven. That's probably when you can afford your first uh, bag of holding. Trey Dorian uh, mentions Nodwick. Yeah, higher Classic. Nodwick. Uh, why is in, yeah, but basic armor. Even basic armor and the basic equipment, you still won't you won't be heavy enough to really phase you that much. I mean, I wouldn't run a rogue at strength six. We're not we're not saying yeah, dump we're not it that hard. Yeah, we're not saying tank it down to three, but we're saying. Put, probably put your lowest stat in that. Um, you could also put your lowest stat in charisma if you're not doing the face stuff and make strength, you know, a little higher. Um, 
you know, I, I don't necessarily rate con as highly as I do wisdom because you need to be aware of your surroundings. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to have enough strength to basically carry your gear. You want to have splurge. If, if you're starting above first level, splurge on the masterwork backpack. It increases your strength by one for effective carrying capacity. If not Tyler, the Hayward Tandy Haversack. If you could afford that, that you now that's that's a different level of expense. The masterwork backpack's a relatively cheap investment. Oh yeah. But yeah, if you can get to a bag of holding or Hewitt's handy haversack, that's great. Um, what I have actually done in a game that I'm in right now, I am playing a cleric. <coughs> so, uh, but I'm playing a travel cleric, and I wanted to make sure his speed wasn't going to get impinged by the fact that his strength is like a twelve, and he has you know relatively heavy armor. So I actually, um, I got muleback cords, which is like a thousand GP and increases your strength by eight for carrying capacity. Wild, wild, wild Zent here. If it wasn't so late, I'd stay and learn a lot here. I know too little about the wonders universe of D and D, but the brain is all used up for the day. You hope you have a wonderful stream. Xanthir, if you want, we always upload this to YouTube, uh, usually within the week. So by all means, check it out on YouTube. Um, if you don't have the time there, it's the same name as I use here. Uh, that way, and you don't have to sit there and watch it. Um, you could always just listen. I mean, it's not like we usually have a lot of things going on the screen that goes, you must pay attention to this to understand what we're saying. Uh, usually we're pretty good about explaining things verbally. You might miss seeing the puppy. Yeah, you might miss seeing the puppy, which is, hi, puppers. I and you join. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's a lap dog, and that's going to be a problem when he gets bigger. Yes, it is. That's going to be a major problem when he gets bigger. Um, the puppy is super cute. Oh yeah, he is adorable. I love him. Can I let him go now? Nope. He's happy right where he is. Well, he's happy. trying to squirm off my lap. That's what I'm saying. Can I let him go? I'll, I'll have to wait until after stream, hun. Uh, skills. Skills, skills, skills. Oh, boy. Um, Perception and stealth. Just start with the greatest hits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those those are deathly important. Um, appraise is situational, but I've always found it to be slightly useful. Or at least hire someone to do it for you. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not... If I had an extra rank that I didn't know what to do with, a praise, I think, would be a, a good uh, good place to put that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that would be a, a good way to do it. Um... So, there is that. Um... Um, um, you're gonna probably want disable device. Disable device. Yep. Sadly, I've yet to make use of the K dungeoneering. Knowledge dungeoneering. Yeah. I mean, it depends on your GM. Uh, you know, that's what you roll to. You know, uh, know about like oozes and things, and uh, certain kinds of hazards. So, really depends on what kind of things you're fighting, and whether or not you care to find out about their vulnerabilities. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of a thing. And it needs it's kind of weird. Uh maybe I picked the wrong screen. Uh no. Is it this You're one? in a spaceship. Yeah, this is a a different game. There we go. This is I think the one I want. Give me a second. Yeah, this is Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. Something visual for people while we talk. Yeah, I'm actually playing Stellaris. I'm trying to finish up a solo game. That's fair. Um, acrobatics is always good for a rogue. Yeah, because uh, in Pathfinder, you can use it to bypass people without taking attacks of opportunity. 
Uh, I will always put some points in acrobatics for that reason. Yeah, acrobatics is good. Um, bluff is good even if you're not the face. Yes. Because there is a whole feat tree uh, for faint. Uh, it's yeah. improved faint, superior faint, and two weapon faint. And if I was going to say any of the ones you want to pick up, two weapon faint is the best. Fair enough. Yeah, look, air. <laughs> look, air! <laughs> I remember seeing that from the old Buffy movie back in the day. <laughs> and, like, it is forever stuck in my head. Yeah. I do not understand why it just it is. It actually worked. It was as stupid as it was, it actually worked. Yeah, it actually worked. And that was just like, okay, that's just funny as hell. Um... Look at distraction. Yeah, distracting, uh, distracting duck. What's that distracting thing back there? Alright. You know what, chat? By the way, while we're talking about this, how about you tell me what I should paint my mechs? I I've always been aesthetically dense. My son kept trying to make them look like hot rods, and my daughter wanted them to be Hello Kitty. But speaking of which, uh, my daughter wants to do Hello Kitty orcs. Nice. Okay. We were actually just talking about the Hello Kitty uh, Space Marines that yeah. someone had in the local community not too long ago. Yeah. Honestly, hun, if, if I'm going to have her paint models... I'm probably going to ask people for broken ones. There's probably people trying to toss them. Somewhere. Uh, other fun things. Alright, rogues. Um, if you're the face, diplomacy, intimidate, sense motive, and bluff. All the needed skills. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing about rogues in Pathfinder is you've got that eight skill points per level, which is just killer. You usually have a decent intelligence for a couple more. Uh, if you do something like human, or at least exploit your uh, favorite class bonus, um, you you can have lots and lots and lots of skill points. Put it put it this way: you can have with the class, human, and favorite bonus, ten plus your intelligence modifier. Every level. That's good. Um, so, that's a lot of skill points. Oh, yeah. Uh, for feats, extra rogue talents are really cool. There's some cool options there. Yeah. Um, going for Sap Master is crazy. <laughs> All right. This this is something that Squidgy learned the hard way when I played a rogue in his Rise of the Rune Lords game, because I took Sapmaster, and is you double your sneak attack damage dice with saps. That's yeah. That's so, pretty crazy. So it's very much like, okay, so it's sub dual dam. It's non lethal damage. Whoop de do. I could still shank you when you're knocked out. Yeah, um, unless you're up against something like uh, that's immune to non-lethal damage, that is a powerful setup. People snatching for fun and profit. Uh, two weapon fighting always uh, uh, like one of the more important ones if you're going melee rogue. Uh, weapon finesse is essential. Once again, yeah, like uh, it's a hard time. For weapons, I would say daggers. <clears throat> and the reason why is because they're great choices for two-weapon fighting. They're great choices because you can also throw them. Uh, and a lot of the feats you can take to improve a weapon, you can just take on daggers and make the daggers very deadly. Very quickly. Um... For armor, there's the mithril shirt, 
the Hamaraki, uh, ha, uh, Haramaki, and the Mage Armor. Uh, those are all really good choices. Um, for endgame armor, everyone I swear under the sun suggests celestial armor. Like, everybody. It's just, it's just really good. Yeah, I mean... Damien, no! I, it's like, goddamn. Uh, for Mithril shirt for uh, Fedorian. Um, for rings, all oh, dear Christ, take invisibility. Like, yeah, invisibility is good. Uh, Ring of Freedom of Movement is uh, pretty sweet. Uh, Ring of Rat Fangs is not a bad. It is another uh, vehicle for your sneak attack damage. Sure. Uh, Ring of Protection is always helpful. Uh, belt of Dexterity is needed. Uh, Cloak of Resistance, really damn good. <laughs> uh, sniper Goggles, if you're doing a range build. Uh, and then Headband of Ninjutsu. You get a plus two insight bonus to attack rolls with sneak attacks. Nice. That is really, really cool. Uh, um, so aside from what we mentioned, man, do you have any other advice for rogues? Uh, I mean, because we uh, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say because we covered most of the basics. I mean, we can go into our experiences and uh, you know other fun shit. I will say that rogue is my favorite of the uh, the Pathfinder skill classes. Uh, because it, it really in Pathfinder it's better than Bard. Yeah. Just because the number of skill points you get, um, because Bard for whatever reason gets less, and that's a little frustrating. I'd say the um, only thing the Bard does better than Rogue is social. Yeah, just because you're gonna want a high charisma by default. Oh, well, not even um, just that. Um, you also have. Um, um, I'm trying to think what I was going to say. My brain is not working quite right. Um, the, uh, the other thing is they have a lot of, uh, bards have a lot of abilities that le lend into, uh, social skills, including versatile performance. Mm -hmm. Which, that is super helpful. I'll go with that. Um, so I would highly, heavily, heavily recommend that. This um, is a bloodletting operation, Commander. Our mission is to cripple a series of uh, what towers else would I located say is at the good. Um, and bugger off before enemy forces know what's hit them. We'll be back to pick you up when the job is done. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, see, back in 3.5 is when I used to play a lot of rogues. <laughs> Uh, I have not been doing that as much lately. Um, because I've had a lot of people who want to play Rhodes in my groups now, and not the melee character. Mm -hmm. And so that's required me to take on more of the fighter role. Right. Which, don't get me wrong, I enjoy melee characters. They don't bother me. But, like, I, I don't know how else to say it, but it's like, Jesus. Uh, good buddy, flank, flanking, learn it, love it. Yes, flanking in Pathfinder, you need to know. Because unlike 5th Ed, where you can be next to your friend and do it, Pathfinder requires you to be flanking. Yeah. Which is damn helpful. Um... So I would really recommend learning how to flank effectively. Not to mention there's a teamwork feat that makes flanking more effective. <laughs> and convince your melee characters to take it. 
because getting a plus four instead of a plus two is nice. Yeah. Like, you have a hard time arguing against that. Uh huh. Someone has apparently seen me. Uh, what else is there? Um, I'm a bit of a fan. Uh, I'm a bit of a fan of rogues that use bleed effects. Okay. I don't know why it's always been a thing for me. Um, I, I don't know why that is, and I, I love it, though, to death. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the bleed effects, as a rogue, you just hit your target and then run like hell. Yeah, um, they have, uh, several, like, sneak attack enhancement feats, one of which can do bleed, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think the other thing. Um, you also want to do dots. More dots. Yeah, DPS. Uh, more dots. Okay, stop dots. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, uh, in addition to doing the damage, you are the trap finder guy, you are the scout, you're going to be the eyes and ears of the party to a large degree, so, yeah. you know, don't just focus on your damage, be That's the true. sneaky guy. Be the change that no one should see if you do your job right. Yeah. <laughs> Rogues should be uh, an almost thankless job. Like, no one should know you're there until it's too late. Oh, don't be the asshole who steals from your party. Yeah, don't do that. You're there to work with your party, not work against your party. Um, also, don't run off from the party. Yeah, there is a difference between scouting and, you know, basically just fucking off into the ether. Yeah, you don't want to be the, uh, the one that splits the party. Fucking Blaine Rock, I'm sucking robots. Because um, I've noticed that with rogues, that's a big problem. Another one is, like, while you may want to play the Edgelord, don't play it at such a detriment that you can't interact with the party. Because that's, that's not going to work out in your favor. No. And that is, that is the biggest problem I've always seen with rogues. It's like, rogues tend to be one of several types of players, and I don't like most of them. There are the players, like what you've played, where you work with the party for the most part, though you have butted heads on occasion. Uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, some people have butted heads with me, but... I can't help having a head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thinking of our Sith Lord in particular. Yeah, Darth Darth. Darth Darth. Or Darth Airlock. Uh, I am a big believer in party cooperation. I always want to play my characters in such a way to move the plot forward and keep the party, you know, working as a unit. And Anne's asking if anybody remembers Darth Darth's name. Because I remember it. 
Oh like his real name? <coughs> no, his character name. Like the real character name. Yeah. I just remember Darth Airlock. Nope, I don't remember that his character's don't... actual name. Darth Sion. Yeah, that sounds about right. I remember Darth Airlock. Kill switch. Which I've never gotten to play. And I don't remember most of the other party. I remember my character and your character, but that's it. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. What happened, hon? He keeps trying to steal my yarn, so I'm going to go into the other room and work on my project, but you can't try and hijack me. Fair enough. Alright, I'll go with that for now. Alright. Um, but Scion was definitely interesting. We were talking about the guy who wanted to show you a game despite you repeating saying you're a veteran. No, that's not Darth Sion. That, that's not him. No. Why isn't it talking about another situation where someone wanted to show me the game despite the fact that I'm saying, like, yeah, I've played this game before. I've been playing D&D &D for a while. <laughs> I had a player in a, um, I think it was a convention, or it might have been at Four Horsemen. I forget which. But sure. the, the player kept trying to treat me as if I was a new player, like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. And, and I was like, buddy, I've been playing D&D &D since 1994. I've been, you know, DMing since 2001. Oh, talking Sotor. Um, fuck, who was it in Star Wars? Yeah, I had someone in Star Wars that was doing the same damn thing. Um... Uh, Angelica's having and having fun with the dog. <laughs> I think she's ready to kill it. But he's so adorable. Oh, I know. Uh, there we go. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me while I choke on my lungs. Get off the couch! I know I heard you jump onto it. Alright, that's a machine gun. Damn it, that's not what I wanted. Okay, I'm in my bedroom with the door shut, and all of a sudden, I hear him land on the couch. How do you not? Because I have sound going in my ear. Uh, FYI, that's mansplaining. What did he, uh, did he, what he did to you? Oh, okay, yeah. What did you get a sticker on your Okay, why does he keep wanting to put fucking machine guns in my fucking ballistic slots? Is he gonna, is he gonna do the braid wipies? <laughs> Stop it. Stop uh, it. What? It's funny to watch your brain. <laughs> She's trying to make me, like, blink out. Divine Rogues of Litamara. Oh, I keep forgetting Faye's actual patron deity and we never actually address. Yeah, some rogues can be divine casters. Ish. Or divinely inspired. Hi, puppy. You are a very big baby. You know that? Yes, he is. Um, kidding. Belly rubs. You have an exposed belly. Rub the belly. Yeah, rub the belly. Okay. Um, I gotta say the craziest... No couch. The craziest thing I did as a rogue was I grappled, hooked a dragon... No. Got up to the dragon. What? That's not the craziest thing you've done. What is then, according to you? You took a bra off a drowning jerk? 
Okay, that's 3-5, though. It's not Pathfinder, hun. Okay, that's fair enough. No. In 3-5, I successfully stole the undergarment off of a drow matriarch. While she was wearing it, while I'm talking about it. While she was wearing it. Yeah. While, while in front of a paladin. Yeah. While in front of the paladin. Yep. Yeah. No, he don't. I wanted to mess with the paladin. Because that's always fun. Um, what else is there? No, uh, like I was saying, the, the dragon, um, grappling hook incident. the dragon grappling hook incident. Oh, boy. That feels it's supposed to work that way, but we let it slide. Yeah. Oh, I had a couple heat sinks. Okay. There we go. Uh... Her car off. There we go. Oh, no, 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 it's not working. There we go. So there is that. That was always fun. Uh, Grapple took a uh, flying red dragon, climbed up to it, got on top of it, and then proceeded to dual wield saps and beat it in the back of the head like bongos. <laughs> and then fell to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with it. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, that was mildly entertaining. <laughs> sure. How about you, man? What's the craziest rogue shit you've done? Oh, well. Hmm. I gotta think about this. I mean, it depends if you're specifically, you know, D&D &D context pathfinder because barton kendo was uh, up there in a number of ways but he's not really a rogue he's a scoundrel it's related concept yeah related um, i'd say i i did run a uh, rogue with some ranger levels and late in the game a little splash of wizard in a friend's 3.0 game and his <laughs> deal was basically <coughs> that he was elven batman and <laughs> oh god and the craziest thing we ended up doing was there was, like, late in the, the game, we were, like, 19th level. It was, this was the end of the campaign. Oh, We'd been uh, asked by a, a freak in the city of Brass to recover a weapon of his that was in the hands of this guy, a warlord on the uh, plane of Acheron, like the, uh, the rusted metal one. And um, this dude was a half dragon dwarf barbarian who had like a bunch of kobold followers that worshipped him and he had this pyramid of like rusted metal that you know for all his worshippers to go in and we were like okay so our mission is just to get the sword I went in invisible to scout the place right? and I'm, and I'm looking around and I find the throne room and I see the dude and I'm totally invisible there's nobody that detects me there and I start kind of thinking like we might not have to raid this place because I have a t had a tendency, especially in 3.0, to build towards certain kinds of combos. And so I had two things that are relevant to what I'm about to say. Uh -oh. I had an I I own stone of spell storing um, that allowed me to store up to six levels of spells. And I had a rapier of puncturing. All now, right. The Raper of Puncturing, if you recall, three times per day as a touch attack, you can drain 1d6 points of constitution from the target. Yep. Target acquired. And then uh, for six levels of a, an Ion Stone spell storing, I had chosen the Harm spell. And in 3.0, that shit was broken. Yeah, it pretty much uh, dropped you to 1d4 one, uh, one one HP, and that was it. So I drop out of cloak, <laughs> touch him with the harm spell, putting him at 1d4 hit points, and then win initiative and hit him with the rapier to drain 1d6 points of cons. <laughs> now, because he had instantaneous rage, he did not drop immediately, but my second attack did drop him. So essentially, I went in and one-shotted the, the boss that was for all of us to fight, grabbed his unconscious body and flew the fuck out. And his followers were like, what? what? What just happened? 
What the fuck just happened, man? <laughs> rejoin the party outside, and then the party cleric casts Earthquake on this big uh, rusted metal pyramid and brings the whole thing down on all the followers. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, just to shortcut of the entire mission there. Hey, it works. And that's part of being a good rogue is sometimes shortcutting the mission. Yes. Yeah, that that was uh, that was pretty fun. Man. My my Elven Batman. Elven Batman. Oh man. Um, I had one guy who played a rogue, and he had to be the center of attention. That was his shtick. And he went with the, the triple strike dagger. This is 3-5. Uh, okay. The triple strike dagger. Uh, lots of poisons. Um, and he took, I think, two or three classes. Okay. So he was cherry picking. Yeah. Um, and good lord was... He an asshole because... He very much uh, did not. How do I put it? If the party didn't do what he wanted, um, then screw the party. Uh, yeah. And I did not care for that. No. Uh, what else did I do that was fun? Oh. He was the second worst rogue I've ever dealt with. The worst one being a guy who played a goblin assassin rogue in 3-5. Okay. Now, normally that wouldn't be so much of a problem. If it wasn't for the fact that in the party was a paladin who was exalted, a cleric who was exalted, and a monk who was exalted. And it was like... Uh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds like a failure to read the room. Yeah. Um, so like when his character obviously got killed because you know stupidity. Yep. Um, for his next character, he wanted to build a rogue, and I'm like, okay, let me teach you how to play a rogue then. So I took him aside and gave him a little bit of advice on how to build a better rogue. Um, and he took that advice. Oh, thank you, Grace Reaper, for the check-in. Yo, what's up, man? Um, he took that, took three classes. He, he went uh, rogue, spy master, and there was a, another, like, social class, and I can't remember what it was. Okay. Um, but he built this character to specifically kill other members in the party. Yeah. Uh, don't do that. Revenge characters are bullshit. We have a rule in my group. We call it the Intego Montoya rule. Um, and what that rule is, how's it going? Uh, my voice is okay. I'm trying to recover it. Uh, give me a second. I gotta hydrate. Uh, my voice is not fully recovered, but it's recovered enough that I can do this. So, there is that. The whole gang is here, Commander. Yeah. Watch yourself. Oh, I wish I could just have my voice stop hurting. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, he did that, and when that happened, I, I kind of looked at the DM and I was like, I, I'm not putting up with this. Um, so, I'm quitting. And the Artificer quit. Cleric quit. And several other people quit. Yep. And it was just like, yeah, that's for a very good reason to quit. Um, and that was not fun. It happens. I mean, you get shitty players. Yeah. And it, that was just... It was really annoying. I hated that. Uh, what else? 
if you're gonna play rogue my recommendation is always find a party member like another player and work out uh an agreement with them to have like a shared backstory so that'll make you less likely to pull the whole i'm a dark brooding person in the corner of the room and no one gives a shit yeah yeah I'd say that's entirely fair. Yeah, because it's just... Uh, what am I getting messaged about now? Someone's messaging me. Oh, okay. Never mind, it's my group. Um, hello, my name is Antigo Montoya. You killed my father before he died. Okay. Yeah, okay. Get out of here. Um, yeah, that's why we do that, Fedorian. It's very much that. You know, keeping someone like, you killed my previous character, prepare to die. <coughs> um, but working out as part of a team, honestly, I found tends to be the best option to uh, convincing someone to not do the <coughs> uh, hang out in the corner, not do any fucking thing rogue. Yep. And that can be a problem sometimes. <coughs> um, but yeah, that that's rogues in a nutshell for the most part. Let me pull up my Twitch. All right, let's see who is on. that page trying to decide in this Stellaris game if I want to actually try to conquer the entire galaxy or just uh, kind of twiddle my thumbs until the victory year yeah, that's always a fun choice all right I let's... tried extending the the time frame so like you know it'll end in 2600 and made like each epic of the game a little longer but yeah i i long ago won this basically so yeah i might do that with my next one god dang there's a lot of people streaming tonight all right let's see who's on oh D and D's doing their thing Uh, let's see, Pilot Dave. Why is this a fucking ended? Asshole. Had to get one in. Had to get one in. We were, we were talking about rogues. I had to do one sneaky thing. Yeah, you sneaky bastard. Uh, trying to see. Someone's playing Star Citizen. Huh. I'm not sure if I should say, you know, congrats or, like, I'm sorry. Uh, a little bit of both, I think. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, Dilly's on. I could always raid Dilly. I haven't done that in a while. I think I'll probably do that. I haven't seen him for a long, for a, like a minute. All right, uh, let me switch over to 
chatting. How's the transitions looking, by the way? They're working out? Yeah, it looks kind of neat. Yeah, took me a little while to set that up. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Waiting for the ads to go away to make sure he's still streaming for a while. Yeah. Um, so, with that being said, uh, whenever we do raid, whoever we're going to raid, because it looks like it's probably going to be Dilly, if you're a subscriber, uh, please use the following message. If you're a follower, please use the following message. Do stick around for the raid, because that's how you get extra critical rolls, and you can use those to basically do cool shit, uh, like fireball my goddamn tavern, or decide what game I play on Wild Card Wednesdays. So, there is that. Um, with that being said, make sure that you're taking care of yourselves mentally, physically, that it is, remember, it is always time for tea in our tavern. Um, and join us tomorrow for Wild Card Wednesday, where I finally, hopefully, get to this motherfucker fucking lands me. <laughs> I am getting tired of like, I think I'm there, and then the game goes, no, bitch, I got more shit for you. It's like, god damn it. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> Let it die. Let me get to the lands meet so I can shank Loghain in the face. It's like, god damn it. Uh, so with that being said, I hope to see you all tomorrow, so please stick around for the raid. I'll see you all then. Toodles. Toodles.